The dramatic jump in cases outside of China now prompting fears of a pandemic. Cases in South Korea spiked by more than 30% Monday alone. The country now has more than 800 cases and seven people have died. President Moon Jae-in has declared a red alert in the country's highest level of emergency. In Iran, meantime, officials confirmed 61 cases, while conflicting reports put the death toll anywhere from 12 to 50. The country now facing further isolation as neighboring states have begun closing their borders. Meanwhile, the biggest outbreak outside of Asia is in Italy. Cases there jumped from 3 to 219 over the weekend, forcing 10 cities to go into lockdown. Fears now growing about the virus moving across Europe's open borders. Melissa Bell is joining us live now in Italy. So, Melissa, just explain to our audience how and why Italy has emerged as the epicenter of this virus in Europe. Well, Zane, it's happened very suddenly. When you consider that only at the end of last week on Friday, we were at fewer than five cases reported in Italy. So very much what we're seeing in other European countries. Suddenly, we've seen those number of cases rise over the weekend, those emergency measures taken. The carnival here in Venice can't, stopped prematurely. So on Sunday night was its last day. Uh, and all those uh, villages and towns, at least 11 of them on lockdown, some 100,000 people now affected by that. Uh, it's the first time uh, that in Europe we've had to see this kind of measure taken and bear in mind that there is a great deal of uncertainty for the time being about uh, the virus as it spreads here in Europe. Patient zero has not been found, which means a number of things, Zane. It means that they don't know how the virus got here, they don't know why it spread so quickly, and they don't know exactly how far it may have spread. That, as you mentioned a moment ago, brings all kinds of questions about what happens next. In a European Union with open borders but no harmonized public health policy, uh, and a European Union that, frankly, uh, so far is not uh, prepared in terms of organizing itself to prevent the uh, transmission across the borders uh, to prevent that spread. And with all these questions, it's very unclear uh, uh, what's going to happen next. For the time being, Italian authorities are saying, look, it's still OK to travel to Italy. But these, this has been a very sudden change in a very few days. So we're keeping a very close eye on what's happening here. And there are many questions, Zane, about what happens next. And how are officials and authorities there in Italy ensuring that there isn't a panicked response to this. But you know, you put your finger on it. I mean, I think that's exactly the kind of difficulty they're facing. We've seen that play out over the course of the last few weeks in Asia. This is the first time that we've seen a Western liberal democracy grapple with some of those questions, placing citizens under a lockdown for an untold number of weeks. And that's what Italian authorities have said. Those people who are in quarantine, it is unclear how long those towns and villages are going to stay locked down. Will there be adequate food supplies? They've put in place all kinds of measures uh, like prison sentences for anyone who might try and leave or enter these areas uh, without authorization. Uh, how is that going to play out over the long term? For the time being, uh, we simply don't know. And it's a very delicate balance that European countries are going to have to strike, just as Asian countries did before them, between trying to protect public health without sending uh, the country into a kind of panic situation, which would have huge consequences for the economy. And as you watch the authorities grapple with this very difficult uh, situation, we've been speaking to a number of shopkeepers around this place, St. Mark's Place here in Venice, who've been saying, look, we're just not getting enough information about what here in Venice, one of those cities that has not been locked down yet, we should be doing. Should we be wearing masks? Should they have closed it off to tourists before they did? All kinds of questions that come probably, Zane, from that very difficult balance that authorities are having to strike. All right, Melissa Bell, life for us there. Thank you so much.